Now that we've run top up, we have an estimate map of where any susceptibility distortions are in our data set. And we can use that now in combination with a tool called Eddy, which will also apply something akin to motion correction that we would see in traditional fMRI uh, analysis. So all we have to do here, first we have to create a mask using FSL's BET tool, the brain extraction tool. And so this is a command, I've already run it. Uh, these defaults are usually fine. So uh, fraction intensity threshold of 0 0.2. This is just something that's toggled to either be uh, more conservative or more liberal in how much brain it tries to extract. But tr usually this is a pretty good compromise 0 0.2. So that's what I've done so far. And after you have that, uh, this is the edit command. I'm not going to run it because it's already been run and we're just going to look at the output. But uh, in a nutshell, it's going to take in this DWI data set that we got from the scanner. It's going to apply this mask that we just uh, created using BET and also uh, this index command is go it's basically just a text file which has a one wherever these acquisition parameters hold. So typically it'll hold for every volume in that DWI data set so we'll have a one for each row for each volume in that DWI data set. BVEX, BVALs, those should be pretty standard. And also we have a couple of defaults here, FW, HM, or any sort of smoothing. Typically we set that to zero because we don't want to do any smoothing in this step. And also this FLM quadratic, uh, I don't want to get into technical details. I don't completely understand it, but they say it's a good default and that you typically won't need to change it at all for your purposes. This top up, remember, is what we ran in our previous tutorial, which is an estimate of all these dis, uh, the susceptibility or artifacts that we have in our DWI data set. And lastly, we output it as these eddy unwarped images. So again, we have this all in this pre-baked folder right here. And if we copy it all into here, we can look at it in FSL view. So again, we're just going to do a before and after comparison. And our first standard of comparison is just the normal DWI data set that we have. Again, this you know had a little bit of smushing and some elongation just due to different artifacts. And now we have this Eddy unwarped images file. And so if we toggle between the two, not only has it corrected for any distortions, but also it's done the equivalent of motion correction that we see in fMRI data. So if we go into movie mode, this that's kind of difficult to see. Actually, I mean, you see some bright spots because it's it's affected by, I believe, what the, the peak intensity is in that particular volume. But if we set this to something a little bit lower, what you would see is that not only are the distortions corrected, but we've also corrected some other things as well. That actually probably was not very uh, illuminating or useful, but you can use th this movie mode to, to try to see how different volumes have been changed as a result of both top up and by Eddie. <laughs> that demonstration kind of kind of failed spectacularly. Um, anyway, so that's Eddie. Those are the two basic pre-processing steps that we use for DTI data. And then the next time or the next step will be actually fitting tensors to this image.